Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built them themselves. <laughs> folks it's mad dog merv we are smack dab in the middle of november and it's time for an update on the uh, train layout it's almost time to put that away for the uh well for the winter because well i don't have heat out in the doghouse so uh when it gets really cold in december and january i have to kind of move things indoors and well that's a shelf layout that just isn't really that mobile so today we're going to kind of give you our uh last update pretty much for the uh, for the calendar year on the uh, on the shelf layout there in the in the uh, doghouse so this year what I decided to do for November I'm not gonna do a turkey train maybe next year but for this year uh, I wanted to do some more of the Denver and Rio Grande that's uh, really my favorite railroad to uh, to model uh, in in the uh, 20th century you know, I, I grew up with the DNRG all over Salt Lake City, and it goes through some of the most beautiful and amazing country, not only in, in Utah, but in Colorado. And so I try to model, you know, the, the shelf um, a little bit after, uh, after what I've seen on the DNRG. So today, we're gonna look at a DNRG passenger train. So stick with us, folks, for the November update on the train layout. So a while back, I picked up a set of heavyweight passenger cars that had DNRG livery on them. And I thought it would be fun to kind of do like the uh, Tennessee Pass area in Colorado, uh, maybe the little town of Leadville, Colorado, you know, train going through there. So that's kind of the, the theme I'm looking at right here. So I needed some good engines. And recently I picked up this, uh, this um, Bachman for 10 bucks. Okay, let's see, we got it on the track here. Let's give it some power. Ooh, that was a big old spark. Okay, so very jerky and so let's get this cleaned up and see what we can do. So what we're going to use for this is just a regular old uh, cotton swab. I'm going to use some 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol, although uh, I usually use 90% or stronger um, for everything else, but this this will be fine. And what we're going to do, look at these uh, look at those pickups. They're filthy. So let's just take an example of this one right here. Now this is just the first initial cleaning. I am really going to tear this all the way down here in a few minutes and, and take a look and see how everything else is. But I just want to do this initial cleaning of the wheels and see what difference that makes. Just kind of see what I'm up against grime wise. You can see, um, well, yeah, the, the dirt that, uh, that just came off of, and that's just part of the wheel, so that's not even the whole thing. But this just gives me some indication of how bad or how dirty it is. Uh, 
Okay, well, didn't make too much of a difference. So we're going to go to the next level. I'm going to take these apart and we're going to get in and clean them really, really deep. Okay, back on the track. And let's see how this works. Hey, look at that. Whoa. So it's amazing what a little wheel cleaning and some, uh, some gear lube will do. Got that thing running excellent and for 10 bucks, what a great deal. Then the next day I actually found this one at uh, MRS, this for 20 bucks. This was an Atherin dual flywheel and this thing ran great out of the gate. I cleaned the wheels anyway, but I think this is the one I'm gonna use to pull our train with. Did do a little detail painting on the, uh, the grills and touched up a few other things and this thing's ready to go. So here's kind of an overall shot looking down the, the layout of the uh, train. I just love the colors that DNRG had on these, uh, these passenger trains. And I think it looks pretty good with the, uh, with the fall motif going on. I really can envision uh, the little town of Leadville and pulling out of there and, and heading for the Tennessee Pass area. So uh, anyway, hope you enjoy these pictures and, and uh, watching the train run. So now for the layout itself, uh, not a lot of changes. I did remove a few trees from the, the railroad crossings. It just didn't seem right. But I did pick up some deer, uh, a couple of them I want to use for Santa's sleigh. And well, I've got these two here that just kind of put there along the tree line um, up against the wall. Think that little wildlife here and there, I'll probably get some cougars and, and maybe some other, uh, you know, whatever else I can get and just kind of throw them out there. And then I've got uh, this character here, just kind of laying down, <laughs> watching the trains go by. But we'll, uh, we'll be putting more of these kind of things up. I'd like to get a couple of uh, uh, hobos and maybe a, a little fireplace and, uh, or, you know, fire pit or something. Just, just some fun little things along the, along the track that uh, the grandkids can pick out. So speaking of fun things, so I recently picked up some uh, corn stalks and I added them to my pumpkin patch area here. I thought it would be kind of fun to have it, have that together. So I don't know, see what you think if, uh, if you like those corn stalks. I've got some left over and I'm sure I'll use them in another, um, in another segment, but I've got this little corner here of the, the train table with the pumpkin patch. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next month.